Hi everybody, Alex Deploy here from Expert Forex and today we're going to be doing the analysis of the market for channel trading purposes. Uh, I can see I've had some comments coming through already. Uh, I hope you can all hear me uh, clearly. Haven't done this for a while so uh, yeah, sounds like the, the sounds coming through clearly so that's pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do is what I normally do. Um, I haven't looked at the market since yesterday morning in terms of channel trading. So uh, here's my account that I'm trading. I have one deal going. It is positive, and uh, I'll go through the process that I normally follow. I'll obviously do it a little bit slowly because I'm going to do a lot more exp exp Explaining. And please, if you do have any comments, um, observations, remarks, uh, I'd like to make this a part participative webinar where when we look at a particular currency, just shout through any observations that you might have. Um, I'll try and explain as much as I can and we'll take it from there. So we do have a, a, a one, one active order and we've got two, uh, uh, three ones that haven't activated. So in the course of today, we'll be reviewing all, all four of those particular trades. Uh, so there, there aren't any closed trades. At this point, what I would normally do is I'd have a look at the closed trades um, uh, in the last day and then I'd analyze them and see if I could have done better, could have done, uh, 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 did I exit too early, did I enter too late, that kind of thing and is there anything that I miss. So I try and learn as much as I can from previous trades but in this case the, this isn't applicable. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start the normal way that I do is I, I start at the very first currency. I'm not particularly partial to currency so I start at the very first one and I look for deals as simple as that. And when I say we're looking for deals, we're looking for channel bounces like this this one year one two three and we're looking at a potential four bounce here or we're looking at failed swings which is a a uh, a situation where you have a one two three uh, bounce and then this one if it then turns around and starts going for the top channel line that would represent a failed swing in other words it hasn't reached the other side of the channel and that could be a possible breakout so the the rules for channel training very very simple we if you have a a, a good a bounce area another bounce area another bounce area you assume that it's going to come to the fourth bounce area and bounce so so that's the one rule and then as I explained the breakout rule so there's only two real main rules uh, there are some subtle other ones but I'll go through, through those uh, if I notice them so I have a let's have a look at the uh, uh, the the Oz Yen, I've got the daily, the four hour and the one hour charts and I look at all of them for uh, potential trades. Um, here's one that I spotted that I didn't take but that is working out because you've got that one, two, three and, and a uh, re resistance area that broke out and is now going south but this is this is a bit, a bit dangerous because you're not supposed to trade the third leg. The only time you can trade the third leg is if it's part of a trend line. Now, in this case, it qualifies because you can see there's a touch point, there's a touch point, there's a touch point. So there are four touch points. If, if, if a case like that exists, uh, you don't need four, you can, you can go with three touch points, then that bounce over there becomes a trend line bounce and number three is then validated as a potential trading area. You don't trade it I immediately like a normal uh, channel bounce. You then wait for uh, support and resistance breakouts or something like that, like I, exactly like I've drawn there. So that's that's uh, let's say a, an advanced rule. So a lot of people are unsure about when can you trade number three, and this is the exception. The exception is if number three is part of a trend line bounce, uh, where it's touched a number of times: one, two, three, 
four doesn't really matter but uh, but if that happens what you do is you do exactly what I've done there you draw a, a, a resistance line I could have most probably drawn it a little bit better than that and uh, you trade the breakout of that um, that uh, support or resistance and the entry could have been over there and as you can say it's you see it's working out quite nicely um, okay um, uh, I've got a message here that audio cutting out, it might be something on your side, always consider that. Um, I'm not getting any other um, reports that my audio is not clear, so when that, uh, yeah, uh, everybody else is confirming that these are clear, so it might be a problem on your side. Okay, so so there's our uh, missed deal, as it were, <laughs> um, and uh, it is working out very slowly. So let's have a look if there's any other deal uh, out there for the uh, Aussie yen. All right, now again, when when the the slope of the um, channel is too uh, slopes excessively, I'm a bit careful of trading those. So this channel almost looks like something that is tradable. Uh, one, two. Again, it hasn't got a. a, a we are trading number three. Uh, it has touched a number of times, um, and I just this this uh, this would most probably be a good trade if it were, but we can if it were to uh, cut through that particular support line. But I'm not going to look at that one. The channel is a little bit small, 97 uh, pips. Uh, that one's too upright. That one's too sloping. Um, that one we've missed, um, and in general, I think we can give this this one a miss. Uh, that's most probably the best setup that there is. One, two, three. That, those are clear major turning points. It is in the middle now. I must point out that you see the center line, this red center line. That is the area of most uncertainty. So. In the channel trading, this is the, the, the channel lines are the areas of most certainty. The middle is the area of least certainty. So uh, you don't want to ever trade in that area. Uh, it, the price can do anything in the middle of a channel. Um, uh, the, the area of most certainty is, is at the ends of the channel where we know it's either going to bounce, uh, it'll, it'll most probably bounce uh, 70 to 80 percent of the time. Or break out after a fail swing. So those are the areas of most certainty, middle of the car, and and that is a general trading rule. So when I even if I trade um, RSI trades, I look at channel trading, and if that trade is in the middle of a channel, I will consider not taking it. It's 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 just one of those little things that I've picked up over the years that when a when a price is in the middle of a channel, it's in an area of uncertainty. Oh, okay. All right. The the the, uh, the the settings on the indicator. There's a question that's come in. Um, the indicator. You have to decide those. There's no right or wrong. Um, I have, uh, for instance, let's have a look at what the settings are in this case. Um, channel server. Let's pull it onto the screen. Uh, oh, it, I've got a few screens going here at the same time, so let's have a look. All right, so this one has a setting of 120 over 6. So it will look back 120 time, uh, uh, um, 120 bars, and it will then select a fractal that has six lower points to the right and six lower points to the, re uh, to the left. That's how fractals work. So uh, that's how it will decide on um, on uh, what is a turning point. So a turning point is any point that in the in the last 120 bars there is a turning point to the uh, six six lower or uh, uh, to the right or six lower to the left that would be a high turning point so that's how that's what that six means now if you 
if you make that 12, it means it, it becomes a more serious turning point because it has 12 uh, 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 turning points to the, to the left and, and uh, 12 to the right. So it becomes a much, and if you make it 24, then it's a really major turning point. So that, that's how the, the settings work. And if you're going to make it 24, then you, you need to increase that to uh, 300 is fine. So, so those are the kind of alternatives that you have. Um, so those are the sensitivity levels. So you can, I like using sixes, so I use 6, 12, 18, 24. Uh, you can use whatever you want, but that's how the sensitivity levels are. So if you've got it at six, it's going to pick up very sensitive turning points. So let's have a look at this one. For instance, it's picking up a very sensitive channel, but it's the cha channel is so sensitive that it's, it's unusable. Um, this one, Let's have a look. It's also on the one hour. Um, let's go and have a look at yeah, channel server. This one is 24, uh, 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 24 bars uh, fractal and 240 bars back. So it is picking up. It's the same time frame, but it's picking up more major turns. So um, this channel is must probably a little bit more reliable than that one. Uh, so that's a highly sensitive, that's that's not so sensitive. And that's why I have different settings. Now this this might not be six and that might not be 24. Uh, same thing applies there. I'm not going to explain every one, but uh, that's how, that's how you set your charts up is is um, um, you have sensitive ones and not so sensitive ones. And very often you see the channel that's identified here is the same channel that's identified here on the daily. So the four hour channel is the same, or the one that I've done in red rather, uh, is the same as that one, but this one has, has not. So let's just have a look at the setting just out of any interest on that one, this one. Well, it is pretty, uh, pretty loose. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers your question. There's no right or wrong answer. You just decide what you think is sensitive and what you don't, what you think is 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 um, less sensitive, and you set your charts up that way. Uh, I can tell you that there's a big inconsistency in my charts. Uh, when I start seeing it like this is way too sensitive, then I might uh, change it to 12. You know, so I, I change these things on an ongoing basis. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, a question that comes: Do I use any other indicators? No, I don't use any other indicators for channel trading other than the channel surfer. And the channel surfer is just a guide. I don't treat it as the decision-making tool. It's just to orientate my eyes. It does make mistakes. It does draw ugly channels sometimes. So uh, don't trust it completely. It is 80% correct. Like there, there's a nice turning point, that's a nice turning point, that's nice. So it is relative, and that is most probably a bouncing point for this particular channel. Um, it is 105 pips, so this is a potential trade. Um, as I say, I'm not, uh, and there, it's identified actually there uh, as a potential trade, uh, but I uh, could put possibly do that one. We'll come back to that. I'll just note that that there's a potential trade on the um, AUD yen one hour. It's, a potential, it's not a, a nice one, but it's it could do. Let's have a look. You see, it would be supported by this channel, one, two, three. Theoretically, it's on its way down, so that's a sell indication, and it, and so what we're looking for is a sell. This would uh, fall in line with that chart. So I do look across charts and I say, all right, well, if I want to sell here, what is there in the other charts that uh, confirm a sell? There's a sell um, trend. That, that's definitely a sell trend to the other side of the channel. Uh, so um, one would look at the other charts to confirm certain trades. Where do you get this a channel indicator on the uh, forum? Just go to the forum, type type in channel channel indicator in the in the search of the of the forum, and you'll find it. Otherwise, go to the channel trading uh, 
parts of the forum. It's all it's all over the show. It's under free indicators. It's under channel trading. It's under this particular service. It's all over. But you, but best to just go and search. I get a lot of so where do I find this? Where do I, a lot of people ask me really basic things and I ha I literally have to Google to find things that people ask me and uh, I just think why the hell can they not do it themselves just Google search go to the forum and search for it there's a search facility in the forum ideal for these kind of things and people are um, you know problem solving is one of the uh, biggest um, qualities of a successful trader you, you need to problem solve when you're trading and if you can't problem solve basic things really simple things then uh, th then you need to evaluate whether forex trading is the area for you um, okay so uh, are you used to having such good winning rates like you have are you used to having good winning rates? Uh, look, uh, uh, my rate last month was 80%. Sometimes it goes to 40%, so uh, or, or not 40%, uh, down to 60%. So uh, it does vary uh, depending on the on the market conditions. But channel trading will also keep you out of bad trades. Like for instance, this is this is a trade, but I'm not excited about it. Doesn't look really nice, so I'll just move on. By using lots of currencies, you're improving the chances of success because you can then say, right, I've identified five possible trades. I'm only going to trade two. That's very important to have, trade a lot of currencies and a lot of time frames. Um, so it is a way of filtering out negative deals and increasing your success rate. But thanks for that comment. Um, Um, uh, sorry, I don't, there's a comment. If uh, if M, MQL4 could write extras, I'd, I've got no idea what that means. Uh, sorry. Uh, so sorry. Uh, right, I'm just trying to read some comments. Uh, uh, channel trading simple. I don't use channel. Tra I don't use uh, uh, candle formations. Uh, I might resort to it at some stage. You can see I'm using bar charts here. So I'm not even using candle candle formation. So so channel trading is simple. You just need to see nice channels and trade them. It's as simple as that. Uh, they, they just mustn't be too slopey. Uh, and keep it simple. That, that, that's that's really the thing. Don't get too complicated and, 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 and make your own rules and all kinds of just trade them as all right so there's nothing there now yeah here here's a trade that I saw um, you can see one two three a, it should have bounced there now it isn't bouncing I've actually got a buy stop in there it it sort of broke out and is is going back now so um, I could leave this deal as it is um, because it could still bounce up and and that is a rejection spike there that's when I look at candle formations but you see I haven't got candles here but certainly that's a rejection so uh, I might leave this deal in as it is um, although it has broken through the the uh, formation um, uh, There's no evidence that this is going to hold at all. It might go further. Uh, and that's what the beauty of pending orders, uh, the, the beauty of a pending order is that you can uh, put it in and if it goes the wrong way, your deal is not activated. All right, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to just leave this, in fact. <laughs> um, I know it looks a bit weird. Uh, but certainly, uh, 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 then another thing is uh, channel trading is not perfect, not perfect at all. So sometimes what I would do is if I see a channel like this, I would actually use internal channel lines like that and put my orders uh, orders in those places. But um, uh, and and so I give myself like a, a percentage um, inaccuracy level. So. 
um, that breakout that where, where the price is now is still a valid bounce point uh, because it's within a reasonable error level. So um, I would keep that deal. So I'm going to keep this deal. So let, 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 let's let's have a chat about what, why I put my stop, uh, target where it is and where why I put my stop uh, where it is. Um, okay, so. That's, that, um, this might be a bit difficult to justify, but you can see my target, uh, theoretically my target is the other side of the channel, but um, I don't go for, and that's about 500 pips, 600 pips, that's 630 pips. So I don't go for ridiculous targets. Uh, I just have a look at the support and resistance around this area and I can see there is a level of resistance up here. Can you see that resistance level? So that's why I put my target there. Uh, it should bounce up at least and make uh, and reach those kind of resistance levels. So that's how I determine my stop, uh, my, my target, and uh, my stop is often just a a, a, a um, response to the target level. So I would say, all right, I'm going for about a 250 pip target, so I'll go for about a 200 pip stop. Look at that, and then I'd also justify it with, um, uh, you see, the, their support levels. You can see there it's bounced there, it's bounced there, so, so and there's also a bit of a bit. So there's a bit of a support level there, so I put my stop just below that support level. So I do use support and resistance, uh, vert, uh, horizontal support and resistance for, to determine my targets and my stops. So that's how I've determined that one. Now there are various other ways that you could do it, but uh, that's that's the way I've done it. Also when I enter a deal, I'll uh, most probably do a following stop of around about 50% of the target. So the, when the price reaches 50%, uh, the um, the stop will be moved to break even. But that there are a lot of other ways to exit. Let's talk about the exits of, of these kind of deals. Uh, if there's, if it's near a um, uh, announcement, I would most probably either exit or protect my, my position. So I'd, I'd either move the stop uh, to uh, a positive level and protect my position. If it's a weekend, um, I, I might close all my deals. It just depends on the circumstances at the time. They know, again, uh, uh, Forex trading is is very much about trading in the moment. So you can't make rules for everything. You've got to make rules for the moment. So. Uh, if there's a big announcement in Russia and there's an election and all kinds of things there, that's an important weekend and then you, you're a bit more cautious than a, a weekend that's got no events planned. And so, so you have to trade in the moment and make your rules for that moment. Uh, a lot of people want to be so rule-based that they don't have to think anymore. I'm the opposite. I have no rules and I make the rules up as I'm trading. Does that make sense? <laughs> Uh, do these rules work on indexes? Uh, um, all right. Uh, do these rules work on indexes? Uh, on are they only for forex? Uh, I don't know. I've not, I haven't traded them in all. But when you have a question like that, go and back trade channel trading on indexes. The only way for for to answer your question, if I told you yes. You'd believe me, and that would be so bad, because you must not believe anybody in Forex. You must only believe yourself. So you, what you do, take some index charts, apply for uh, channel trading to them, and see if it works. That's another uh, thing that, that, that's very common in Forex. People want to get answers from gurus or from books or from courses. The worst thing you could ever do, and I found that out very early in my life, in my forex life, don't trust anybody, trust yourself. So if you have a question like that, go to an index chart, go and see if, if, it's, if it's good for channel trading, see what the turning points are like, you know, if you're getting good turning points like here, uh, and they are bouncing, and you see regular channels, then it's good for channel trading. Do you have an indicator for support? Yes, my eyes. My eyes are my biggest indicators. I, I visually see 
support and resistance. And maybe because you're not as experienced, you can't see it, and I also make it up. So I'm not 100% correct. I just say, oh, that, that must be more or less support and resistance. I, that must be more or less support and resistance. So I make it up. And don't be scared of making things up, because why I'm confident at making things up, because I've done it for so many years, I know that what I've made up in the past has worked pretty well. But please don't, again, it's not rule-based. I can't say to you, you must take that point and align it perfectly with that point and with, you know, that kind of, I can't give you those kind of rules. I make these things up. These are no, I, I trade according to a no rule policy. I make the rules up as I'm trading. So th that is most probably not such a great support and resistance level, but I like it. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry, you know, the, a lot of people are looking for the rules here, and um, the, the rule that I'm saying is trade with no rules. Um, make them up as you're going along. But you do need some skills. You need to see, more or less, be able to see support and resistance. More or less, you don't need to be 100% accurate because, uh, you know, we're talking about a chaotic market. It's, 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 it's a volatile, chaotic market. So the, the, why apply rules to um, do you use Fibonacci? What's Fibonacci? Have you had any success with Fibonacci? Again, I've tried Fibonacci and I've failed miserably with Fibonacci. It, uh, but you might get huge success with Fibonacci. Again, whether you decide to trade Fibonacci or not is a personal decision. I threw Fibonacci out very early. There's a totally inconsistent concept. Um, but I will, if I think this is a turning point there, over there, you see this turning point here, I, I would say, you know, I wonder if that's a, a valid turning point. So then I'd go, oh, where's Mr. Fibonacci? Oh, it's hiding over there. And I might even be doing this the wrong way around. But I would go and say, all right, uh, uh, there was a good turning point. Oh, oh, that's on a 66. Oh, okay, no, that's good. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it supports the fact that it might be a turning point. So all good. Yeah. You know, uh, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't trade for Fibonacci. I would just use it as confirmations um, and, and that type of thing. So uh, we're not moving very quickly, but that's fine. I, this was a, a discussion. Um, uh, discussion for, but so, so I do use Fibonacci but out of interest just out of interest oh that's interesting it's it is at a 66 yellow and white now I haven't prepared this uh, as a uh, thing but uh, it, believe me it was at a 66 bounce so 60 or 67 or whatever but uh, it's just you know out of interest oh that's interesting it's, it's also for Monarchy and that uh, decides on your um, helps your decision making if you can have more factors confirming a bouncing point you know if, if this is a horizontal support if it's a non-horizontal support you know if it's if it's a Fibonacci and it's also it's also a trend line and it's a horizontal uh, support and resistance, then that suddenly becomes a, a high probability of bouncing area. So you you take a lot of things into account, but you make them up as you are trading. You don't, you know, you, there's no rules that say, oh, you have to find three things. It just gives you a, 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 a warmness, you know, a, a comfort level. All right, uh, 61. You see, I don't even use Fibonacci that much. All right, so uh, let's move on. Uh, we've decided to, to leave this in place. It could still bounce. There is a, a rejection happening at the moment there. Uh, it could still go uh, bounce, and, it, and if it does go up, uh, it, it will have created a new channel, which is something like that, and, uh, and uh, our target is still well within the, the channel. So we'll just move, I'll, I'll leave that one in as a trade. Let's move on. So we've got that, that, all right, Euro Oz. Uh, and, and if you notice anything else on the charts, just shout, I uh, will. Now, here's another one where, uh, where the, the price is in the middle of the channel. So already it's a bit dicey. I, uh, I get a bit worried when that happens. Um, let's have a look what we've got here. There's nothing really exciting. 
uh, that's in the middle of the channel. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, see. I'm looking at my red lines because I've overwritten the the green lines. Um, uh, the green lines basically said that that's number one, and that's number two, and that's number three. That's what the green line has said. Now, if we believe the green line, then what we're setting up here is a fail swing. You see, bounce, bounce, bounce. Oops, it hasn't gone to the full. So it's setting up for a fail swing. So uh, here's a trade. Although it's in the middle of the, uh, or let's just get rid of that. that Let's not confuse you, but that 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 is a major turning point. That is a major turning point. That is a major turning point. So uh, that number three, I'm not sure whether it's a major turning point yet, but we can use this. So sometimes, sometimes one, two, three. Sometimes the um, indicator is too fast to find number three. Now in this case, I reckon it is too fast, but that's fine. Um, and here's a setup for a breakout. <clears throat> I, I will most probably have more of these webinars uh, uh, over time. Uh, this one's going to be a long one because I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm trying to explain this mode because you see my objective. People are always saying, please start a, a, a signal service, and I can just copy your trades. I don't want that. I want to teach you guys how to trade. Yeah, it's so much better if you do your own trading than, 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 than rely on me. I might get sick and not be able to continue. Best you learn how to do these things, and they're not difficult. Quite honestly, uh, if the breakout happens, I'd like to put that entry below the previous low, so I'd, I'd go something like that. Um, I'd like to put the stop above the previous high, so I'd go something like that, then how far could this possibly go? Um, and we'd look at some support and resistance levels, most probably there, okay, that, that's a good point. I don't want to put it on the, on the support, see there is the support, that is the support, but I'll, I'd like to just put it above the support. So that gives me a roughly 50-50. Because, because my success rate is over 50, I don't have to have a, um, uh, a high risk return ratio. 50-50 is fine. So there's the deal. Would anybody agree with this deal or not like it? And I'll tell you why I like it is... is Maybe I don't like it. Maybe I don't. Oh no, oh, no. Uh, yeah, this is why I like it. It's a bit of an in, into the one, two, three. So it's going for four. So that that confirms that it could possibly uh, go to uh, sell. Uh, this is a sell deal. This one is definitely one, two, three. It is a sell deal. So, um, so um, let's let's just see. Uh, that's that's setting up for a sell trend. Okay, so the sell is good. Um, so let's do let's see what 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 kind of um, stop we've got here. It's about a 140 pip stop. So um, what I would do this is the Oz Euro Oz, and we'll go to lot sizing. And we'd go to the Euro Oz, 7.7. .7. I guess I could automate this, but it's, I, I like. And what was that? I can't remember. Um, Hundred and forty, roughly. So uh, let's bring the uh, 140. So that's 140. I'm going to risk 4%. Uh, my account at the moment is actually not 72. Sorry, I'm jumping around. It's the first. It's about 73. Okay, so that's fine. Not too bad. Um, so it's 73. I'm going to risk 4% on a 140 pip stop 
and my pip there, and so therefore I can risk 20, uh, 0.27 lots. That's what that was all about. And I just go like this. So what was it? 27 lots. Oh, okay, jeez. I can't remember now. Anyway. My short-term memory is going 27.27. Um, okay, stop loss. So I just look at the value. Easy. 9.70. And the take profit is six. Make it eighty. Uh, like round figures. So um, pending order, it will be a breakout. So it's a buy stop, and it will happen at um, eight thirty. And we can go. Oops! What happened there? Buy stop. Stop loss nine seven. Uh, uh, so sell stop. Uh, sell stop. Uh, thank goodness this thing has got a. <laughs> All right, so I put the deal in there. Uh, it's must probably appear down here. And then what I like doing is just removing the uh, lines to make sure that. Um... Okay, so there's there's the deal. Okay, um, just, uh, just some, notice something else here, here's another channel here, and my, ta my target is a little bit, one, two, three, four, my, target, my target's a bit tight, All right, but it will be covered by the 50, 50% um, uh, stop loss, I'm not at the trailing stop, so I'm I'm going to um, <clears throat> I'll only put the trailing stop in when it's active, but I can put it in now. Um, it is about 160 pips. So it's 80, 80. So 80 is 800 points. So I'm putting in a stop, a trailing stop. So I'm worried that my my target is a little bit out of range of this particular trade. Can you see it's um, there's another channel there that the greenie hasn't picked up. Okay, so uh, no idea of, uh, what is your risk reward ratio? What 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 or your risk, uh, your, my risk reward ratio is what happens at the time. So in other words, um, I don't have a fixed one. I just determine more or less what it looks like. Sometimes uh, on bounces, you can have very small stops and very large targets. And in, in this particular case, I've got a large stop and a large target. So again, no rules. Now remember, this is set and forget. I'm not going to look at this again, possibly for two days. So there's, I'm, I don't have the luxury of waiting for confirmations and all that. And also, channel trading is simple. If there's a failed swing and it breaks out, you trade it. There's no confirmation required, nothing like that. You just trade it. That's why, you know, People want to make it complicated, but it's not complicated. Just don't try and make it complicated. There's a simple rule. If it's if you've got one, two, three, assume a bounce at number four. That, uh, I'm looking at my red channel now. The 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 the, the green channel is is indicating a possible breakout trade. Um, if there's a breakout, however, then uh, it, 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 it can, the potential for breakout is double the, the channel width. So uh, um, this target is well within that range. So um, so it's very, it's very simple, very simple. You know, you, you just need to, um, but you need to uh, take into account certain considerations like is it against the trend? Is it supporting the, the movement that's currently happening? You know, th those kind of things. And you need to look at the uh, multidimensional approach where you're looking at 
different time frames, but also different settings within those time frames. But th th there's there's a, a trade that I've found. It looks good from this, you know, from that perspective. It looks good. It's you know, but it might um, w well. I'll evaluate it in a, in a day's time or so. Did you set the target outside the channel? Yes, I have. In uh, well, it depends which channel you're looking at. See, uh, the green channel is fine. The green channel, the, the potential target is right down here somewhere, uh, which is uh, no, uh, it's double. I can't actually duplicate this. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so 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 there's the target. It's the channel width is the target for a breakout. So it's well within. Uh, the green channel. It's the red channel that's that's a problem because I'm saying that's a major turning point. That's a major turning point. That's a major turning. Point. So it should bounce over there, and that's why I covered that with my following stop. <clears throat> yeah, the, the the trend is up, but the current trend, the current trend on is is actually down. If you're channel trading, you you believe it's going to bounce there, and you believe it's going to bounce there. So my target is actually very good for this particular trade. Although one shouldn't trade in the middle of a channel, but so so there are arguments that said I sh I shouldn't I shouldn't trade this because this is in the middle of a channel, but it's fine. I'll, I'll go with that. So, so there's no perfect trade ever. You, you, you know, you need to just look at. Um, are, are we over analyzing it? But um, you, we just need to. Uh, here's an example of a, a really good trade that I missed. Uh, one, two, three. But you see, this three bounce was not supported by other bounces. So it's just one that I saw that looked good, but it wasn't really a channel trade because that one, two. See that three. You can't trade because there's no support for it, but I just saw this as a potential trade, so I missed it. But it wouldn't have been a valid uh, channel trade. Just going to have it. There's nothing there. Ooh, there's some potential there. Let's have a look. Very very sharp channel. One, two, three. Um, reason why there's potential is again you I like this thing you know so um, I really like that uh, th th that's got a lot of poten uh, cell potential there um, but that's too th that slope is already a bit of a warning that it's a little bit sharp but uh, let's just see something here one two three it's broken out it's made a failed swing broken out so there's a, it's a, you see again you see this is messy that, that what's happened there is messy because theoretically it should go one two three four and bounce or bounce and then come back but but it, it sort of had a half bounce and came back and retested and all kinds of so this is this is becoming a messy channel and some uh, maybe not something that uh, I'd want to trade. If it becomes messy, just move on to the next um, the next one. But there, there's a potential trade there, so we'll move on. Euro. Now, the euro has been channeling, uh, uh, trending uh, quite amazingly. It's, it's, it's in a almost 500 pip uh, trend. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, um, I would stay away from it for a while until the, the trend is over and when is a trend over more or less when it is a double bottom or a head and shoulders or a, um, a consolidation of some sort at the bottom yeah but there's no sign of that anyway and that's not a nice channel at all um, so this one we just leave completely. There's, there, there, there's no, there's, there's no, um, there are no nice channels. So one, two, three. It's in the middle of, of of that move. So we'll just. It's not nice. It's chan, It's trending too much. Uh, channel trading is best traded on a um, um, on a sideways basis. Not not on a a, a, a 
Um, all right, so, so here's an example of a trade that I put in, which is uh, uh, bounce there, bounce there, bounce there, fail, swing, and, and I put a sell stop right down there. And uh, it didn't work. So that's the other thing is that 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 um, that if you put your your entries in places where it has to make a new low, for instance, um, you know it needed to make a new low to hit that that entry point, then um, these kind of events happen where your thing has failed, but it hasn't activated the um, trade. So let's have a look. Um, what do we do now, though? Let's have a look. Okay, so 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 the reason that was the foul swing, it hasn't happened. So the reason is so what we do is we delete that because the reason for the trade is no longer valid. And we'll look for another trade. Yeah, let's just look quickly. One, two, three. See that happens quite a lot. That that setup, one, two, three. And the support line happens quite a lot, so it's 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 not a it's it's not a channel trading trade unless you can justify that bounce up there, but it certainly is a very good trade set up for let's say just alternative trading. Um, all right, so there's nothing here on a channel trading basis that I can see. Um, No, there's nothing here. Yeah, that's the most major turning point. Those are the most major turning points. And so it's sort of in the middle of the most major turning points. Um, now let's just move on. There's nothing here that we can do. Uh, pound yen. I see one more time. After one. <coughs> All right. Uh, all right. We, we, uh, I think it's very important to identify not to make turning points up. Clearly, that is the uh, turning point. That is a turning point, and that is a turning point. Now, one could argue that that is possibly a turning point, or that is a turning point. Don't make turning points up. You know, if, uh, I don't know. I just don't see that as a turning point. I don't see that as a turning point. I don't see that as a turning. You know, uh, uh, they have to be major turning points. New highs, new lows, new highs. Uh, that's that's quite important. It, 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 that is not a thing because it's not making a new high or new low. It's just in the middle of the of the two. So just just be careful about. Uh, making up turning points um, and the green line is not it likes making up turning points but uh, you've got to see what there is all right so let's let's move on thanks for that comment um, from New Zealand okay so this is oh this is what we're in isn't it okay all right so what's happened here let's go and have a look it's on its way to the target so we might move the stop up a bit um, uh, because this isn't a following stop this is a manual break even stop that I entered so here we are so we've got one two three major turning points because they are on the daily four now mistake I entered the deal too late I should have entered it on the green line and had confidence um, and uh, all right, so I did enter it a bit late, and let's just see why I entered it a bit late. Uh, oh, uh, reason is is I just didn't watch. The, I wasn't watching the charts at the time, and and I think that might have been a, um, at a time that I wasn't focusing. But certainly, um, that I entered on a new high. Let's put the new daily high. I think it was a pending order so uh, uh, let's just make it a bit bigger yeah that was on a on a new high that that entry there and it is working out quite nice but it, it hasn't had a, a a nice run because if you look at it 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 went 
you know, two thirds of the way to the target and then came back one third. So this is what you've got to get used to. And, you know, you just got to trust the channel trading thing and, and it is going to go in waves. So that's a way, there's already one wave, there's a second wave and it will go in waves and uh, it's pretty close. So all we have to decide here is, is uh, what to do. Do we protect our position now? Once this 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 thing has gone almost um, eighty percent to the target. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my stop to uh, most probably to about there to protect the the profits that I've made so far. So uh, and while I put it there, it's, it's just um, there was obviously a resistance there, resistance, and I'm just putting it. Uh, there could be another I should actually put it just below the resistance but um, uh, I'll, um, I'll leave it where it is that's fine because I'm still making a big chunk of the profit if it comes back and hits that stop so that's the only uh, change I'd make here um, so I'm protecting some of the profits and it, that was a good trade. That that was just a, a very good trade. Let's just see. Um, yeah, it's, it's making reasonable profits, and uh, it's been around for a while. That's why there's a swap charge. And um, okay, so no, nothing more to be done here. We'll just leave that to either hit the target or hit the stop. Pound. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I I, I like uh, using pending orders for all my trading uh, with with uh, channel trading. Um, I like putting my pending orders at new highs or new lows. Um, and that is just going back to this. Uh, there's a few comments that have come in here. Um, uh, that is why, uh, look, I, I missed that bounce. I should have actually got it right on the bounce. So I gave away a good 80 pips, I think. 100 pips. No, 80 pips, yeah. So so, um, so I should have had the confidence to put that, that, that buy in. Um, Missed it, but then decided to uh, that the uh, that the movement was confirmed, and I then went in and and, and traded it. Um, can't recall exactly on which candle, but I, it looks like I I put my my entry at the new day uh, when it broke the the daily high, the previous daily high. Okay. Um, <sighs> Right, so it was a good trade, but it was late. <laughs> if we do a post-mortem on it, that's most probably what would happen. All right, now the pound daily. Oh, why did I miss this trade? Oh, it's against the trend. <clears throat> it's a beautiful trade, but um, here's an example of when you can trust the third bounce. So there's, there's the bounce one, bounce two, bounce three. And that is the trend line. So there's the trend line, and you can then trust the the the, the, the uh, you can then trade. Well, not trust, but you can trade the third bounce uh, when you have a trend line supporting the third bounce. So th this is uh, this is clearly working out if you had entered at the at the correct point. Um, and obviously this is a big uh, consolidation area. These are daily, so for the whole week it's gone sideways. So this is a very that. Now the reason why I didn't trade this obviously is that it's it would be an against the trend trade. So although it was a good trade, or could have been a good trade, um, uh, um, it wasn't against the trend trade. So uh, that's why I didn't take that one. Uh, you can see the trend, how strong it is. Um, that one's in the middle, so it's one, two, three. Now, the, the question here could be, is 
Is this a trade? One, two, three. Is there a trade here? Uh, the channel size here, although it looks small, is a hundred pips. So, th so there is a potential trade here. Yeah. Hundred pips. Um, it is at the end of a trend. Now, there's a triple bottom here. One, two, three. So we've got a triple bottom, which is starting to confirm a uh, turn. Now, you've got this is a spike candle. If you if you add them together, you get a huge spike. So we're getting some, we're getting some upward movement. Um, so the question here is, do we put a, a buy order here? Oops. Let's do it again. Do we do a buy order on there with a stop about there somewhere and a target? around about there somewhere. Is that a potential trade? And that would support this uh, this uh, trade a little bit, although it's, uh, on the whole it's an against the trend trade. It, there seems to be a consolidation that's trying to happen there. Um, all right, any ideas? Would, would you trade this one? You see, there's a point here, smaller stop. Uh, if you are risking 4% of your account on every deal, the size of the stop is becomes less important because what, what I would like to do is have a stop over here somewhere. Or maybe... Maybe over there. All right. So uh, uh, ideally, I want a, st a stop round about there. So um, the size of the stop doesn't matter because it's four percent of your account. Whether you have a, a ten pip stop, or whether you have a hundred pip stop, you're still risking ten percent of your account. So what I like doing is making my stop work for me. So I want to put the stop in the most unlikely place where it will get hit and this is most probably the most unlikely place for it to be hit uh, putting it cozy right there is the most likely because it, it, it will just go and test that support and just go over it and then jump up and then your stop is exposed so you want to put your stop in a safe place um, so don't get hooked into the size of the stop because it's, it is four percent of your account. Oh, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm trading four percent of my account. Whether it's so, I hope you're getting the message about that. Um, so, if you're going to trade that way, Ron, make it a nice big stop and give yourself a hell of a good chance of success. Even if your risk return ratio starts going warped, like this would be quite a big stop for that kind of return. But um, it's sometimes better. I think I'm going to give this one a, a miss uh, just because of the strong tr uh, nature of this trend. Uh, I don't want to uh, try and catch a falling knife. But there's a lot of evidence. That, as I say, there's the 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 the, the triple bottom uh, is there. So um, there's a lot of evidence that this could could be, but it's not strong enough. I don't think. Um, the evidence is strong enough, so we'll just move on. A possible trade, but uh, I'm not going to wor worry excessively about it. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, again, you got the same as the previous uh, chart. Huge trend, same type, same type of thing happening here, but there's a continuation going on. This one's trending way too strongly. Uh, in fact, there was a looks like there was a gap. 
something's happened. There must be an announcement or something, but a huge gap here. Um, so uh, just stay away. This just doesn't look. There, there is no channel to be seen. The only channel to be seen is something like that. There's the channel one, two, three. Boom. So, so it's in the middle of the channel. Stay away. Um, there's nothing more to be. You know, you you can't squeeze blood out of a stone. If it's in the, if it's like this and it's trending, trending like a like crazy, not tradable. Oh, from a from a uh, channel trading point of view, Canadian. Okay, let's have a look. So here was another one missed trade. One, two, three. But again, that's not it's not strictly a channel trading trade, but uh, because that trend line wasn't confirmed so you can't trade number three if it hasn't been confirmed so but again you can see the setup is is quite a good setup it, it, it works quite well um right so so there's no trade there it's already happened uh, let's have a look at oh, here's something again um override the, the the green and I'd say that that's those are the turning point although that is most probably not yet a proper turning point it is uh, close to one right again there's no no reason to trade no. All right, let's not waste time on this one. Frank, I think that's also trending like crazy. Oh, look at this trend, my oh, gosh. All right, uh, hang on, it's, it's heading for 850 pip trend. All right, now we're getting close to something. You see, uh, the, the green, look here, the green's turning saying that that is a turning point and there's no ways that is a turning point my red my red line is more reliable so what can we do here we can certainly trade this this is the daily Let's see if there's anything yeah no right so so, so, so there's an announcement coming up now. What's nice about announcements is they they do honour channel trading. So if there's a spike, it'll go up and hit that and come back, or something like that. Yeah, it it does honour channel trading. The sport resistance created by channels, uh, and you can go and test this for yourself. Uh, don't believe me at all. Uh, don't believe me at all. Uh, Sorry, I've, I've gone on a bit long here, but I think let's let's continue. So, um, so here's a trade. So you would trade one, two, three. So this is four. So you put there a sell. You put it above the previous high, and you'd go down to see there's. This must probably be the best level of resistance it's, all right let's we'll put it about there uh, support 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 resistance resistance okay that's good enough uh, uh, all right so so that's more or less a deal isn't it let's see the, let's look at the numbers 200 and we'd have a now, yeah, you could do a Fibonacci. You could say, all right, if it does go there, uh, my my targets must probably be too small. It should be around about over there. But, uh, you, you know, those are kind of things. But I, I like just using this kind of approach. So I'll just push it a little bit higher because I don't want it right on. Let just push it a bit higher. Okay, there's our deal. So um, we're going to put this one in. And this is the franc, and it's 200. 200. So let's haul out the machine. 
Frank is uh, should be one, should be ten, but I let's see if I'm. Uh, Oh, ten point four one. Okay. Ten point four one. Two hundred. And it's fourteen. Fourteen. So we go. Is he trade, uh, risking the same amount on any, any trade uh, creates quite a bit of order because you you know your lot sizing. Um, the stop loss will be three, five over. Take profits at uh, nine eight nine over. This will be a pending order. It will be a sell. It's going to be a, bow, a bounce. And it's going to go in at 1, 3, oh. <clears throat> Okay, so there we are. Again, just... Okay, there we are. Okay, that's a good. I think that's a good deal. One, two, three, boom, boom, above the previous high. Um, target, very reasonable target. Theoretically, you, you've got the time you can trade it to the bottom. Um, okay. Doug, the lot sizing uh, uh, template here, I, I, I would feel a lot more comfortable if you design your own. Uh, I'll tell you why, because it's very simple. You take your account size, you take the amount, uh, that's a variable, the risk and the account size. You see the blue blocks are the variables. Then uh, it will, if you say your account size is that and you want to risk that, it will work out what the risk is. Then you determine your, your stop size, you look up the uh, and you can get it, get this kind of printout. Just search on the internet. You look it up there, and it will work out what your stop value is. Your stop stop value. If you had one main lot, then it says no. I'm not going to have one. Uh, and then it takes that as a percent as a percentage, and then works out the the lot size. So I would prefer you, that you can't do this yourself because it will. You know, when you own something, when you've done it yourself, you own it. And it's no longer Alex's lot sizing, it's now Doug's lot sizing. And then you know what's going on, you know how the calculations work, and you own it. That, uh, that's one of the reasons why I hate set files, I hate giving out these things, because people should know how these things work. They shouldn't need these kind of, you know, uh, share, share, my, share this. I, and, and that's something I've always done, is I've tried to create my own tools so that I know what, if there's something goes wrong, I know how to fix it and how to do it. Again, I'm coming back to that trust nobody. Don't trust the other people's tools, you know. It's like a dentist. Oh, that, the, the, uh, that's a very nice dentist tool. Can I borrow it? Don't try to, don't trust other people's tools. Create your own tools that you're comfortable with. All right, and it's so simple. If this was a complicated thing, uh, it's, it's so simple. So please, you know, it's it's a it's a, a seven line calculation. Very, and then I put a test in to say that if I if I use that and I had a twenty percent and the value was that's what I'd risk, and then I compare that with that, and I'd say okay, I know the calculation's right. So. Um, so, quite honestly, I'm not going to share this. It's, uh, I would prefer you working it out for yourself. It will just go so much further for you. It's, 
Uh, all right, so that, that's it. Um, it. It looks like an unlikely trade, but you never know. It'll just spike up there and, and, and come down in this announcement. That's what's going to happen. It'll spike up and then come down and and, and we'll all live happily ever after. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, all right. So I think that that, that was the last... Uh, oh, no, 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 we've got one more. All right. So what happened here is I put a sell stop in and as you can see there it is and the reason why I had confirmation one two three so so it validated the third bounce because strictly speaking that's bounce one bounce bounce two is actually over here um, and bounce three is over there and because there was a trend line it validated that you could trade bounce three so I drew my line, put it at the below the most recent low, and it didn't work. It, did, it didn't take it, and I'm just going to delete that then. Uh, but that was the idea. So, so a lot of uh, channel trades sometimes do not work if you um, place your 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 transactions in the right places, uh, keep them out of the noise and. Um, then uh, now the question is do we trade it now right now right now that's the question so maybe I shouldn't have deleted that uh, trade and maybe I should just have kept it and put put the entry or just move the entry up Yeah, that might be the trade. Let's have a look. Hundred and four hundred and thirty. Forty. Mm. All right, so let's have a look. I think that, that can we can we even push it higher? Must not be yet, because I tell you, um, well, I'm going to put this one in. Uh, it looks good. Now, that is a major turning. That, that that is a major turning. That's a major turning. That is a support. Yep, yeah, meets all the requirements. Um, let's just do it. So it's, that was 130, I think. 130 on the yen. You sometimes the the trades just jump out at you and and um, the yen yen is um, and, uh, nine point three six and we've got one hundred and thirty and it is it says twenty three or twenty four. 24. 24. See, that's what I'm risking 4% on every trade, so that's why the lot sizing is inconsistent. Um, it'll be take profit of. So, so, um, in order to, it'll be a sell stop and it will be uh, oh I, I put in the wrong thing <laughs> uh, thanks for, uh, luckily nobody noticed but stop was wrong and 70 that's why I draw the line so that uh, after I place the deal I can now those are spot on because um, 
I can now remove the lines and hopefully the deal will be there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so there's there's the deal for the yen. I'm quite happy about that deal. It's, it just looks like it could do that. Now, I like the the violation there. Okay, so let's have a look. Just want to quickly look at what we've got. So we've got the yen. We've got the Frank, I can't remember that one. Oh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, that was that was that one. Yeah, no, I remember it now. Then we've got the Euro Oz. Oh, that's the breakout one. If it breaks out, and then we've got the Oz USD. Which is the dangerous one. I don't like this one. It's too much. Too much. It feels like it's against the trend uh, or against the major trend. That that that. That's why I'm starting to not like this one anymore. Um, so, uh, uh, as you can see, a lot of the um, trading is a bit intuitive. So I'm going to actually delete this one. I don't like this one. Um, anymore, <laughs> uh, you know, we've got we've got three good good deals, and we've got one oh one going nicely, and um, so it's, uh, we don't have to trade that one. It looks a little, it just looked a bit more uh, risky. <clears throat> Where do you pull the pip value on your Excel file? Uh, you go to Mr. Google. You say pip value uh, forex pip values, and you follow any um, uh, links that Mr. Google gives you and you'll find something similar in many, many ways. Oh, I've got a one. Uh, I've got a thanks for noticing that, Mick. I've got the wrong uh, currency here. Whoop. Easy big mistake. Uh, so that should be the Oz. Where is the Oz? Oh, there we are. So we just ch change it that way. Okay. Thank you for noticing that. Let's reevaluate it. No, it's still not. You see, uh, it, it, here's an example of the of the. Um, uh, of the green saying that is a turning point. And I'm sorry, I just don't think that's a turning point. Uh, you know, that is a, the, oof, I don't know where, it must probably up here is, is, is a more valued turning point. In fact, you've got a sort of a line here of turning points. But um, I don't think that is a turning point. So that's why I tend to redraw these uh, channels uh, quite quite a lot. Um, which makes that almost a bouncing point. Anyway, we won't. Uh, the, I think the session's gone now. Matter if you are. These are these lots of these kind of things. Um, okay. So any questions? We've 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 gone on a little bit long. I, I normally do this in ten minutes, quite honestly. Uh, but I've I've spent a bit more time trying to justify and discuss and and debate certain uh, things. Um, Um, right. Any any particular questions? Thanks. Thanks very much for those comments. Much appreciated. Pull the. Um, I do not get your one to bounce stuff. In other words, our, our rules were channel etc. All, right, all right. Just to repeat, this this is a comment that's come in. Channel trading is about um, um, identifying three major bouncing points. So it's uh, like in this case, one, two, three. Uh, you once you've determined that, uh, you then assume there will be a bounce at number four. 
So that's the basic rule of, of channel trading. You'll assume that there's a, there's a bounce at number four. If there is a bounce and it goes up and comes back down, that is what we call a failed swing. It's not going to the other side. It's actually coming back. And then that is the rule for a breakout. So those are the two basic rules for channel trading, which makes channel trading so easy. The only thing is you've got to you've got to find the channels. You've got to actually um, the green the green indicator does help finding the channels, but sometimes you have to override it. But that, that, that that's how simple channel trading is. And as you've seen, that's but mainly the, the the techniques that I've used. Um, So you, the pip values that I'm using is not the same as yours. No. So what you need to do is work out whether mine's wrong or, 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 or yours is right. As simple as that. And you need to determine whether you can trust mine or whether you want to trust yours. That is, uh, look, there's, that's how things work. You've just got to decide. You have to decide which is right and which is wrong and what to use. If your pip values differ from mine, then you have to decide whether to use mine or whether to use yours. You see, the, 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 the responsibility of forex trading rests purely on the forex trader, not on anybody external to the forex tra uh, trader. So you cannot trust a guru. You cannot trust even some of the stuff you find on the web you can't trust. So it's a good thing that you're double-checking these things. But in the end, you have to decide what is right and what is wrong. And your broker your broker is often the one that's right because he's that's what you're going to get that that's what the broker is using to determine your deals so if there is a dispute use your broker's values thanks for that observation but again um, Oh, uh, can I ask what time of day? Now, look, uh, it's probably the worst time of the day to do it now. It's the market's very quiet. It's, it's the start of the Asian market and all that. But uh, you can do this at any time, at any time. Because, because you're trading into the future, and you're not using market orders to immediately trade. You are putting pending orders in. So, And especially if you're using the daily and the four-hour charts, you're trading into the future. So whether you're trading uh, six hours, before the actual transaction activates or 12 hours before it activates, you're trading into the future. Uh, the time of day is not critical. I, ha I haven't really found. You'll see the, the price is a long way away from where I put my orders in. So um, the time of day becomes less critical. And that's why it's a lifestyle technique. I love it because I, I can just look at the charts. And, uh, you know, I've taken a long time now, but uh, I can look at the charts and do it in 10 minutes and, and update my, my settings and, and all that type of thing. Do I ever combine it with the RSI? No. Uh, uh, when you're trading channel trading, I don't think of anything. I don't think of uh, announcements. I don't tr think of anything. I just look at where the turning points in the market are, and I trade channel trading. Please do not complicate something that is extremely simple. A lot of people cannot trade channel trading because it's too simple. They try. I mean, I, I, I can't, you, you won't believe how complicated people can make something that is so simple. I mean, what you've seen today, all the trades I put in are based on very, very simple things. Very simple. All right, sorry, I've gone well over. I think there's still a lot of people in the room, so obviously, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's not too bad. Um, uh, yes, the, I would say that the, the most important thing is to uh, is to have objectivity. Thanks. There's a question that's coming. Have objectivity. Don't don't try and make this a turning point when clearly that is a turning point. And don't you know? Don't create things in your mind that aren't there. You must see. If, if the rules of tra channel trading is based on turning points, then your first ability must be to um, 
to um, identify turning points. Now, one of the uh, training wheels you can use is the, is the zigzag indicator. Uh, that will give you an idea of where turning points are. There, there it is on the screen. Now, it is too sensitive at the moment. So what, what I would do um, is I would make it... Uh, it's too sensitive. Ooh. Um, so, so you play around. You just, and again, n never be scared of playing around. You can never harm anything. I'm just putting random numbers in. It's taken away some of the sensitivity now. So you play around with the settings until they, uh, but, but the zigzag indicator is a good training tool for spotting major turning points in the market. You can see it, it actually picks them up quite nicely. But uh, you have to play with this, around with the settings. Sometimes it's too sensitive. Um, By the way, your orders are not in sync. Uh, FX Blue updates every 30 minutes. So um, uh, it, it, it might not update immediately. Um, it, it, it might take a while to update those, um, those ones. So um, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> All right, uh, just a question come in, failed swing. Again, the failed swing is one, two, three. It bounces at four. It should go to five right there, but it doesn't. It goes sort of part of the way and then loses momentum and then comes back to the channel line. I think I've got an example somewhere, but I can't remember where, but um, a perfect, almost a perfect example. Uh, No, I'm not going to waste time, but, but that's how it works. Just have a look at the a course. There's a, there's a course on the, uh, in the, in the website, there is a course. Um, I'll very quickly just uh, find it for you. See, on, on the website, there, there's my, my trading account, but at the bottom here, there's channel trading training. So just go to the links in that training and uh, go, do, in fact, I'll open it up for you. Do, do this course, the money, this one, do this course. It's a free one uh, and it, it is nice and simple. You can, the Udemy one is is actually the best one to do, but there's a small charge for that, about ten baht. But the this one is a nice and simple one. Oh, so it has sync. Thanks, thanks. All right, I'm just so sorry. All right. Th look, uh, thanks very much for your attendance. I appreciate your attendance. Uh, there will be a recording. It's a hang of a long recording this one's going to be, but uh, there will be a recording available to you, um, which will you'll must probably receive it in about an hour or two's time. And um, if you want to have a look at that, I have uh, gone on a little bit too much, uh, but uh, I think it's important that you all understand the way I think, and I think the summary is, yeah, don't, uh, the, some rules are important, the basic uh, channel trading rules of bouncing is important, but don't be bogged down by rules, just, um, just uh, be, um, uh, use your common sense and reasonability, and don't be scared of taking risks and making mistakes. I think that that's that that's where uh, you know what I've done over the years is is uh, uh, it's better to take risks uh, and um, and learn from them than not to do that. All right, okay, from me, Alex Ploy, cheerio.